Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The nature of God. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There art no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cureth, for he careth for you. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 28 to 29. And base things of the world and things which are despised are God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God is your Redeemer, quote, Beloved, though this, through this gospel, the glory of God will be revealed. We have been told that God loves things which are despised. In the entire Christendom, who has ever had such wisdom? Our first lesson has so revealed God unto man and has made it clear that God's glory goes not to whom that wants it, neither is it to those that run after it, nor possess wisdom or righteousness. If you realize this, why are you lamenting? God is the author of all things. At times, you complain of not having any person. The question is, if you have a person, what would he do for you? Some complain of not having wisdom. If they should have wisdom, what would they do with it? They complain that they do not exist. But should they exist, what would they do? A lot of others lament that there are no people around them. If there are people around them, what will the people do for them? These are things one should think about. The primary purpose of this gospel is to reveal God. It will not dwell on forsaking sins. We want to reveal him as an omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent God. Even if you should possess all things or nothing, the cause is neither from you nor another, but from God. I want to prove to you that if you are in good health or in ill health, your life is not secured. Should you be lacking in this wisdom? God is the author of whichever temptation that comes your way and at the same time He provides a way of escape from every temptation. The more you investigate or search for God, 
the more he fades away from your sight. But when you do not search for him, he appears before you. This alone should clarify the fact that he is the door of everything and the only duty you have to do, hold fast. To give thanks to him and worship him at all times. Jacob and his family were about 35 in number when they went down to Egypt and stayed there for 430 years. The question is, what was their hope about returning to the promised land? When the children of Israel were under the kingship of Pharaoh in Egypt for a period of 430 years, what do you think was their hope before they were taken away from Egypt? Realize that when it was time for their departure, the people told Pharaoh that a king shall be born whose kingdom shall swallow his own kingdom. Then Pharaoh asked them to keep watch for the time such a king would be born so that he may know what to do. When the king was born, they told King Pharaoh about the birth. Then he inquired about his age, which they told him was three months. Be because of this, Pharaoh ordered the killing of every child of the Israelites from a day old to the third month. He did this so as to eliminate the newborn king. But since God is the author of temptation and also the provider for the way of the temptation, all the children were killed. But Moses' mother laid him in a basket and placed the basket by the bank of the river where Pharaoh's first daughter usually take her bath. When she went for a bath, she saw the baby child and picked him up. At that time, at that same time, the sister of Moses, who went along with her mother, was keeping watch over the baby from a nearby bush. She came out of her hiding and told Pharaoh's daughter that she knew somebody who could nurse the child for her. Pharaoh's daughter was very happy over that gesture. Hence, she sent for the nurse, Moses' mother, and handed baby Moses to her to look after the baby for her for a fee. The question is, as at that moment, how do you think Moses' mother regarded Pharaoh? For the child who Pharaoh sought to kill suddenly became his own child. Do you think Moses' mother did not regard him as a fool? That is how God is. At last, it was that very Moses that delivered the children of Israel from Pharaoh's bondage. If not for the fact that God wanted him to be taken away from the bondage till this day, they would have been there because they did not have any person to help them out. So, this should reveal to you that God is all and in all. Thinking retrospectively, right from the time of Adam to that very time, there was no righteous fellow. All were sinful in the sight of God, hence he decided to destroy the world. In due course, God inquired in heaven who should come down and save the world. He also posed the same question on earth, but there was no volunteer. But when there was no more hope, the Redeemer appeared. Our Lord Jesus Christ volunteered 
at last to come down and shed his precious blood for the redemption of mankind. The time would have been declared a period of war for if our Lord Jesus Christ did not volunteer to come and save the entire mankind, that would have been the end of the world. This was done as a result of love God has for mankind. It was not because of our lamentation or our righteousness or our prayer or because we deserve it. But it is the manifestation of that which is written in the scripture as quoted in the first lesson. You should put on the gospel of this day as your armor. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. There are no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that he may that he may be able to bear it god the author of everything beloved as from now and forth you should always keep the words above Believe in them, for there is no temptation that comes your way that you cannot bear. And no matter the type of temptation, God will make a way for you to conquer. An illustration. Changing paper to money. Once a man had a daughter whom he went about proclaiming that she can transform papers into money. Meanwhile, the daughter had no such wisdom or ability and had never on any occasion said such a thing. When the ruling king heard about this, he sent for the small girl. The king ordered that papers should be heaped in a certain room which he showed which he showed them then he asked the girl to transform the papers to money even when the girl tried to tell him that she had no such wisdom the king ordered her to shut up her mouth and do what he had asked her to do the king told the girl that under a period of three years if she did not transform the papers into money, she will be killed. And if the and if she carries out the transformation, he would take her for a wife. The girl was locked in the room where the papers were kept. She stayed there throughout the first day, throughout the second day, all along crying. But nothing happened. The third day, which was the last day for her to live or die, came. As she was still there crying, a short man appeared from nowhere and inquired what her problem was. The young girl told him that it was her father who had put her into that problem that she did not have any wisdom about transforming papers to money but her father went about telling that story to people after telling him everything the short man told her that she should stop worrying herself that if she would accept his condition he could help her his condition was that the girl should accept that her first child would be given to him after her marriage to king. The, girl, the young girl accepted the condition and immediately 
He transformed all the papers into money. When the king opened the door on that third day, behold, the whole house was filled with money. After that, the king ordered again the filling of another house with papers and then ordered the young girl to transform it into money within three days. She started crying again and so the third day the same short man came again and transformed all the papers to money. The following day the king went and discovered that the house was filled with money. Again he ordered the filling of another house with papers which was also done and the young girl was again told to transform the ordinary papers into money. Again, she started crying for a period of two days. On the third day, the short man appeared and transformed the papers into money. After which, he reminded her of his condition. The king went again and took possession of all the monies. Thereafter, he invited all and sundry for their wedding ceremony. After the wedding, she became the queen and forget about the short man. Fortunately, she took in and delivered a male child, being her first son to the king. One day, the short man appeared before her and requested for the child as was agreed. The queen refused and demanded for another condition. Then the short man told her that he has given her three days within which if she can tell him his name, then he will forget about the child. But if, if not, if she can't tell him what, what his name was, he would take the child. Immediately he departed, the queen sent out her servants to take collection of names from everywhere they could. When the short man visited her on the first day, she enumerated all the names brought to her by her servants, but none of that of those names was for the short man. Again, the queen sent them out to bring to her more names from everywhere they did but all was in vain on the second day the same order was sent on the third day all her servants left remaining only one female servant who went in search of firewood in the bush as she was going about in the bush searching for firewood she saw a burning fire ahead of her and a short man was going round it singing the queen does not know that my name is rupel's keskin the maid went nearer and heard the song clearly when she arrived home she called on the queen and told her everything so when the short man visited on the third day, the queen told him that his name was Rupel Skelskin. So right then, the short man disappeared and left the child. This illustration shows the nature of God. It also makes it clear that no temptation is above you. And when you are being tempted it is god that tempts you and somehow he also delivers you from the temptation by providing a way for you to conquer in order for him to be glorified do not lament anymore that you do not have a father or a mother or children or friend etc because god is yours god belongs to everybody no matter how critical a situation may be, he does not leave us desolate. When Moses led the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, one day he was no more to be seen. He went missing 
and no one knew his whereabouts, the Israelites lamented, for they had no other person to lead them. They remained in a state of agony for a period of 40 years. Under that situation, God gave them a leader, and to their greatest surprise, Joshua emerged and led them to the promised land, which was Canaan. So, you should always hope on God and not on your brother, money, or any mundane thing. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God cares. Beloved, how many people know that God is taking care of them? He is caring for you all the time. Hence, you do not have to worry yourself anymore. God is true and his words are also true. So, whatever God promised is true, that he will never leave us for a moment. God cares for you. He cares for the fishes, the animals and every other thing. So you should abandon lamentation for he is the one that serves himself and at the same time provides you food, provides you clothing, shelter and provides you with life and would not deceive you. Recall, when the Israelites were in the promised land, they consulted Samuel and requested for a king who would rule them. Meanwhile, Samuel was the prophet in charge of all the tribes of Israel and Samuel's hope was that when his children grew they would inherit his position of authority that happened to prophet Eli whose intention was that his children would, would inherit the priesthood from him but as God would have it a barren woman named Hannah, brought forth Samuel. God is all-knowing. He sees things both near and far. God knew that the children of Eli were not good. He knew the extent to which they had committed sin by breaking the tight box, drinking, eating the sacrificial meat, and fornicating. So the Holy Spirit descended upon Samuel as he lead, as he heard the call from him. On hearing the call, Samuel went to prophet Eli and inquired if he was the one calling on him. But Eli told him that he did not call him, that he should go back to bed. Samuel went back to bed. But after a short time, the voice called him again. Again, he went to Eli, who told him that he, he should go back and lie down. But that when he hear the voice again, he should respond by saying, Yes, my Lord. Eli made it known to Samuel that God wanted to communicate with him. When Samuel was called the third time, he did as was directed by the master. And God told him all what would happen to the Israelites, that they would be defeated by the Philistines, the Ark of the Covenant would be collected from them, and that there would be mass death because they did not revere God. To Eli, since he was unable to advise his children over their unwholesome behavior, God promised his household death. All the words happened exactly as God said. The Israelites fought with the Philistines and Eli's two sons died. When the war was over, Eli asked his people, about the outcome of the war. They told him that the war was not favorable to them. 
Eli inquired if his son uh, Eli inquired about his son and he was told that they were all dead immediately he fell down and died so three of them died the same day as God revealed for Samuel you can now see that the Israelites were left without any person to rule them from there Samuel took over the throne if any of the sons of Eli were alive do you think Samuel would have been given such opportunity that is how God goes about his work so you should lament no more but cast everything unto God for he cares for us at all times the nature of God now I want to tell you about the nature of God Samuel's son also did not revere God because of that the children of Israel avoided them and decided to consult Samuel for somebody that would lead them Samuel was not happy over the request he expressed his surprise for being alive yet the people were still in need of somebody to rule them after such thought he promised to hearken to their request in the interim the ass of Samuel's father got lost and Saul and his father's servants went in search of the lost ass the servant asked Saul to go with him to a prophet who was at then dwelling in that area that he would tell them the whereabouts of the lost ass Saul told him that one cannot go to a prophet without anything for they were empty and dead the servant said that he had some gift and so they went on reaching the prophet's house the spirit of God told Samuel the prophet that Saul was the one he should appoint as king for Israel so when Samuel anointed Saul king over the children of Israel they complained about his age for he was quite young God does not do his things the way it will please man especially when you do not leave everything to his care the impatient nature of man before that time God had kept a king for the Israelites and that king was David but since they were in haste and requested for a king for from Samuel a wrong person was given to them read the golden text again golden text first Corinthians chapter 1 verses 28 to 29 and base things of the world and things which are despised are God chosen yea and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence beloved have you now seen the wish of God a thing which is regarded as nothing and is at the lowest level is being exalted to the level at which it becomes something great by God then who do you think is in charge of his exaltation is it not God then if he is the person the same dwells here if somebody has well children and whatever thing you may think of you should be patient for your own turn is by the corner everything is done in turns and whenever your turn is come even in office you will give way and become a pensioner 
even as Nigeria is now in search of a president, if there, if time is not taken, someone who is not recognized by the public will become will become the president. God carries out his duty in his own way. As such, he is sufficient unto all. God assigns everyone to his or her, or her own time of blessing. So, if another person has money, has wealth, and children, while you have nothing, do not worry yourself, for your time is coming. For instance, Africa is not really recognized in the world, neither has she anything as far as the world is concerned. The blacks depend on the whites for everything like money, clothes, food, and education. If not for God, when do you think Africa can ever have help? Because the whites are not ready to help the blacks. The blacks have no people, but they have God. So, you should never at any time worry yourself. God chooses the things that are of low degree. So, if you are despised, rejoice. It is written. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. That was James chapter 1 verses 9 to 10. None in the world would has this knowledge. This is why even the Africans are not regarded as anything. Hence, you can be killed if you should prophesy that you saw a black man ruling the world. Unfortunately, the blacks do not regard each other, but give regards to the whites. Even as this kingdom is in Africa, if it were to be in another part of the western world like america everyone would have loved to go down there but since it is here it is not accorded any regards civilization started in egypt thus greece germany South Arabia and all the countries around there derive their languages from Egypt. Also, they have already taken their own part of glory. Now, do you know whether this is your own turn? When have you seen this type of glory? taking place in Africa so you should relax and make good use of your eyes to see what is going to happen God will surely reveal himself and people will be surprised over this continent and in Nigeria in particular recall what happened concerning the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was born in Nazareth, a place where nothing good had ever emerged. Nobody had ever emerged there as a worshiper of God. Hence, when he was about to be delivered, all the high priests and kings like Herod and Caesar and the rest of them prepared their houses so that Christ may be born there. But at last he was born in a manger to a very lowly family. David's case of killing Goliath throws more light on how God goes about his work. David was not a military man, but he only went to the battlefield 
to supply food to the soldiers. But according to God's design, he killed Goliath. So do not worry yourself in whichever condition you find yourself because the love of God is sufficient unto you and every other person and it exists in you forever. It is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.